Hi everybody, this is Kevin, CPA that does financial planning, and today I'm gonna to talk about lottery winners. Wouldn't you love to be a lottery winner? Well, why do lottery winners go bankrupt? And what can we learn from lottery winners? Uh, so, so anyway, I've read a number of articles. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's really great scientific evidence of do lottery winners really go bankrupt, but all the articles that I've read suggest they do, and I believe it. So I uh, read an article recently, it said three to five years, most people that win the lottery are bankrupt. And uh, I've done some research on why does this happen to people? And it's pretty intuitive. The first reason is that lottery winners don't have a sense or a perspective of how much money they have and how much money they're spending. Now you can think, well, that person is very unsophisticated. That's why they don't have a sense of that. But speaking to a lot of clients over the years, it's really easy to lose perspective of how much money you have or how much money for the high income, how much money is coming in and how much are you spending? It's very easy to lose perspective. So, so I don't judge lottery winners with the fact that that happens, okay? Let's say you win $10 million and you're like, woo, $10 million, I can get a $2 million home still have $8 million left. Well, what about the taxes that you had to pay? You had to pay maybe $4 million in taxes. Now you have this $1.5 million, $2 million home. Now you have to furnish it. Now you have to heat and cool it. So all of a sudden your expenses, which were $25,000, $35,000 a year, are now $100,000 a year or $125,000 a year because you got such a nice home. Now this whole idea of keeping up with the Joneses, I will tell you, and, and Charlie would say the same thing, we see this all the time. Uh, when you're in fi finance, especially personal finance, you see that it's very difficult to not keep up with the Jones. I'm talking about us, I'm talking about Charlie and myself and the other team members. It's very hard when you see that your neighbor has a new car and you don't wanna be a schlub. I think it's just something in our DNA. Well, um, you know, people that win the lottery they now have the opportunity to move to a nicer neighborhood and you know they're they're new money and people might judge them as being less worthy because they've just won the lottery well they want to have nice stuff and they want to keep the neighborhood up uh, now that they've come into the neighborhood so they not only buy a nice house but they probably buy nice cars you got to keep up with anyone that owns a house can tell you that it's it's not all uh, the American dream. It can be the American dream and everybody wants to own a house for the most part, but there's lots to do. So now we'll go over to the high income people. So maybe you studied a long period of time to become a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, uh, an airline pilot. Maybe you went into the military, especially our airline pilots went into the military for a good period of time. Well, now you're making a high income. And it's sort of like the lottery winner where you don't have to worry about money like you used to. Like every month you were worried about, you know, can I pay all these bills? Oh my gosh. But for a while, you just have all the money you need so you don't really worry about it. So when you're newly high income, you don't worry that much about it. Well, um, you quickly can lose perspective on what is important in your life. And that's the first thing that we do with people that are high income. That's what probably lottery winners should do is say, all right, I only have a certain amount of money, what are my priorities? And actually go through and discuss, is this more important than this? Is, is education for children, private school, more important than driving a nice car? Which, which of these are trade-offs? There's always trade-offs. Uh, we've had many clients come to us and say, we make a ton of money, we don't know where it goes. And that's because you can spend all the money. You're, you're not unique in the fact that you spend all your money you make. It's very easy to do. So putting um, priorities is number one. And then number two, I call it tricking yourself, but is really having a plan when money comes into the bank account, where will it go? Not pulling so much out of the bank account that you have to stress and you have to you know, eat, eat rice and beans again. Um, although there's nothing wrong with that, but not having to stress, but just having money automatically go to non-deductible IRAs, which can be converted into Roth IRAs. Having money go to taxable accounts, and if you put in the right types of investments, it can grow. Um, you know, putting, uh, making sure you're maximizing all the, the tax uh, deferred benefits that are out there. 
So just, just having a plan really is the second thing that we do to help high income people. Um, the second part about lottery winners is that many lottery winners, they, they get a ton of money. Uh, it's really hard not to get your uh, self on the internet that you're a winner. Some states you can still do that, but armies of finance people will come out and try to sell you investments. And again, not having any perspective uh, many times on having a lot of money, uh, now people are coming to you that are the best salespeople because they only work with really high net worth people and you're one of them. And they can tell you a great story and, and sell you on a product. Um, many people still make commissions. About 90% of uh, people that are financial advisors still can make commissions or the company that they work for, the big name brokerage house, still gets paid some soft dollars or third party money. So that still can be an issue. So uh, these lottery winners get sold things they, they really uh, shouldn't be buying. They're not, they're not prudent investing. So with the high income, it, it's the same thing. I mean, uh, unfortunately, doctors get a bad rap. Uh, I've not found that doctors are, are, are you know, being sold terrible investments, but, but many times uh, you know, you'll read that doctors get a bad rap. We've heard pilots get a bad rap. Uh, you know, you're sitting in one seat, the person in the other seat tells you how they became a millionaire and you want to go ahead and invest like them and you don't really understand what they did and, you know, so it's, it's really easy to invest uh, in a way that's not very prudent. Now, prudent investing is like watching paint dry. It's not exciting. It should not be exciting. Uh, if you can get rich really quick, guess what? You can probably get poor really quick as well. So we believe very much at Leading Edge Financial Planning, helping people understand what prudent investing is and what it's not. Uh, that timing the market is dangerous. Picking stocks can be dangerous. Now, if you wanna do some of that, you can, but the prudent investment dollar should be invested prudently. So anyway, that's the last time I'll use the word prudent. If I use it again, you'll shut off the video. But lottery winners, high income, number one, is to understand your priorities, have perspective of where your money is going. And number two is invest in a way that will help you in the long run. So I wish all of you newly uh, minted lottery winners the best of luck. And for high income folks, we're happy to work with you. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video.